Remote sensing has revolutionized the way agriculture is being practiced today. With the tools and the technology it brings to the farmers, farmers can make more informed decisions about their water applications, about their crop health and the crop management, leading to higher yields and better resource management. Remote sensing is a, a science of collecting information about subjects from a distance. It usually involves satellite imagery and sensors. And back in time, it involved the use of uh, simple cameras like the one here on, on airplanes. And even sometimes on pigeons that uh, cameras were attached to their necks and they used to fly and come back with information about countries and areas and military, etc. Nowadays, we have a lot of remote sensing techniques that are available, including uh, many satellites that orbit the Earth every day. And these satellites collect thousands of images. And these images come in various forms. Some images come as an optical image, simply, you know, RGB band. And some images come with more advanced bands, such as the near-infrared, the thermal infrared, and even the microwave and the uh, radar bands. And uh, remote sensing has a lot of applications in many fields, including uh, climate change, weather models, uh, land use analysis, agriculture, urban planning, etc. So this is what, in brief, what remote sensing is about. When we look at remote sensing applications in agriculture, we are looking at uh, several advancements to the field. One of the major advancements is our ability to measure water use from space. And this can be done utilizing the thermal image of the satellite. If you can know the amount of energy that goes into the evaporation from the surface, you can then estimate how much water your crop is using. And by estimating this amount, you would be able to replenish this water to the soil and you will be able to irrigate it precisely. Another application is knowing how much yield can be produced by a certain crop. And many people cannot make this link between the yield uh, of, the, of your land and the satellite image. The satellite image can tell you a lot about how healthy your vegetation is and what are the uh, potentials to improving your yield at the field level. For example, if you have a large area of land that's being planted for, with a crop such as potatoes or corns, you can tell if this corn is producing more biomass in a certain area than in, an, in another area from a high resolution remote sensing image. You can also tell that if this crop is being attacked by a disease, again from the evenness of the greenness of the field. You can also tell if this crop is uh, in stress or in drought from measuring the temperature of the surface of the canopy. With differences in temperatures of the surface, you can say or you can uh, deduce that your field is not being irrigated uh, uniformly or your plants are not absorbing water at the same rate, which will also affect their photosynthesis and eventually it will reduce the biomass which affects the yields. So the main uh, three, let me say, uh, pillars that you can use remote sensing in agriculture in are one, uh, the crop health in terms of uh, the irrigation amount that is needed, the crop biomass, and also its uh, susceptibility to pests. If you have pests and diseases, the crop will change its color and this can also be picked by the satellite image. We have a satellite. It takes an image of the Earth. What do we do with it? Usually this image goes in a repository or it can be analyzed by a software. You can simply, as, as a human, look at this image and uh, detect objects that you can usually detect if you're on a high-rise building or if you're flying from a plane. But we don't stop there. We need to bring this image into further analysis. 
So what can we ex what information can we extract from an image? You can extract information about the uh, number of buildings in an area, or in agricultural applications, the number of trees. You can also uh, try to detect the type of crops by doing some image classification analysis. And this is usually done with the help of machine learning and artificial intelligence, of course, based on ground truth data. From this, you can derive the type of crops and you can know what is planted where. You can also analyze the extent of snow mapping over a mountain, um, try to deduce the amount of snow water equivalent for that snow in water applications. You can delineate flood maps. And this can be done using a lot of software that we now have available. And also, this is not restricted to satellite imagery. You can fly your own microsatellite, I call it, putting a sensor on a drone. And this is being done on a lot of agricultural enterprises uh, globally. Uh, we have companies that uh, do this for their business. They fly their drones for the farmers, they take images of the fields and the crops, they collect this data, they analyze it, and they provide feedback to the farmer. This type of feedback could be in the form of irrigation requirements of a certain parcel of their land, or they can advise on where to focus their herbicide spray applications and where which part of the land would need more fertilizers. So all of this technology is now available. Now it's available for the uh, technical user uh, to analyze. If you have a farmer, then it would be depends on the level of education of that farmer. Usually farmers uh, outsource these tasks to companies and the companies will take care of generating this data on a weekly or uh, even uh, sub-weekly basis for the farm. What is the role of universities and also scientists and academics in utilizing remote sensing technology? Let me give you the example of the American University of Beirut, the Department of Agriculture. We have a drone in which we uh, have a sensor built up on it and we fly it over uh, the agriculture research and experiment uh, station in the Bika area. And we fly it to map the crop. We can also tell, for example, on drip irrigation, if every dripper is giving the same amount of water by looking at the wetting pattern on the soil. This is a uh, very precise application of remote sensing technology in drip irrigation. So, for example, drip irrigation is known to be a water saving technology and it's favored towards other traditional methods of irrigation. Yet, if you bring a drone and you have a sensor on it that can capture the uh, temperature of the surface, you can tell if this temperature is cool by the amount of water that's present in the soil and this will uh, using some algorithms, you can deduce how much water is being evaporated. And you can also tell from the temperature if the wetting pattern of drip emitters is, uh, is very um, uh, consistent and very uniform across the line. You can also fly it over uh, fields with, uh, irrigated with sprinkler irrigation to see if your design is appropriate, if the application of the water is uniform. You can fly it over fields uh, to test the uh, temperature of the canopy and see when it's the time to harvest and even when, when it's the best time to plant in a certain area. This doesn't come without challenges. One of the main challenges of, uh, for example, using drone technology in, in agriculture in Lebanon is uh, getting the drone to the, to the country. So you have strict import requirements and there are also other regulations um, by the uh, concerned authorities, such as the Department uh, of Aviation and also the, um, the Army, because they are concerned about flight safety and also concerned about um, the security of you know, the population. So whenever you want to fly a drone, you have to get a permit. And this is uh, pretty similar in other areas of the world. However, in Lebanon, it's a new area that's not being uh, fully, um, let me say, uh, legislated. And uh, we have to work more on uh, bringing in uh, legislations in order to smooth out the applications of uh, drone technology in agriculture in the country. One question that comes to mind 
is the availability of opportunities in utilizing this technology by startup companies. Globally, there are a lot of companies that utilize this technology of remote sensing and drones in agriculture over uh, different areas of the world. Now, in Lebanon, this is a bit challenging. Uh, first, it's, it's, it's um, comparatively speaking, it's a new technology for startups as well as for the, uh, for the client. So the client is the farmer. The farmer is not sure of his need for uh, this type of images or uh, his or her need for uh, you know, this type of data that they can better utilize. And this is, in my opinion, due to several reasons. Uh, one of the reasons is the mindset of the traditional farmer in, in our region. They are used to uh, indigenous knowledge and I'm by no means criticizing the indigenous knowledge, but they're, they are used to a certain way of doing things. And um, it's sometimes hard for them to adopt a new technology, when, especially when the cost is high. Uh, the main opportunity that I can see is that um, you can find some hero farmers who are willing to invest in this type of technology uh, because uh, they know it can save them uh, money, they can save their resources, save on fertilizers, especially now with the ongoing uh, water issues in the country. So um, if you portray this technology as a way of uh, cost saving to the farmer, there are some uh, good opportunities there. And because the um, uh, many of the land lots in Lebanon are less than two hectares, it would be hard for farmers to invest themselves in, you know, in, uh, in this technology. Like um, one farmer cannot decide to buy a drone if he only like has uh, 20 denims of land. You know, he can just tour them every day or every other day and see what's going on. But if you go to uh, larger farmers and who, uh, who have the resources and who can, um, you know, uh, financially justify the the use of this technology on the land, then there's a good opportunity there. Given the availability of, um, or let me say, given the restrictions we have on some uh, drone operations in the country, what can we do to alleviate or to mediate uh, these types of restrictions? Uh, startups can invest in not necessarily, you know, thermal drones because these have uh, higher restrictions than the multispectral drones, but they can invest in drones that are um, available for use at the farmer's level. So uh, they can get some optical imagery and derive uh, some metrics such as the normalized difference vegetation index and other vegetation indices to help farmers identify issues of pests and also some uh, non-uniformity in water applications, which can also be deduced from the greenness of vegetation. Now, uh, drone technology is not the only technology that you can utilize for farmers. You can utilize available satellite imagery that are uh, free, or some, some of them are commercial at a high resolution. And available imagery is Sentinel-2. Sentinel-2 satellite comes at 10 meter resolution and in, uh, in agriculture, it can be used um, not on small parcels, but on large parcels by governments, say, to identify, you know, uh, crop types and also advise farmers on, um, you know, on, on several issues such as the uh, applicability of fertilizers and, uh, and other uh, probably pest infestations in, in large areas of land. There are also other satellite companies, such as the uh, Planet company. The Planet produces imagery at 3 meter resolution at, uh, at some cost. And startups in other areas of the world, they have uh, engaged with, uh, with these companies to provide more advanced and more technical details to the farmers in terms of their crop mapping and uh, the health of their fields. Uh, what did we do at the American University of Beirut uh, to use uh, this uh, freely available uh, satellite imagery. Using a grant uh, from Google, we were able to develop an application uh, called AXAT that's available on iOS and also Android, as well as a web app. 
This application is a farmer-friendly uh, application in which any farmer in any area of the world, actually, not only in Lebanon, any area of the world, the farmer can simply pinpoint uh, the field and the application will retrieve data about uh, the irrigation water requirements of the crop as well as the irrigation run times. And this is simply based on a uh, small input from the farmer just telling the app what is the irrigation valve size on the plot and just to delineate the plot in the app. So this application has been is being used in many countries in the world and it is uh, free for the farmer. There are no costs associated with the use of that app. It also utilizes uh, real-time weather data from um, the European uh, Space Agency uh, data center. So it links the vegetation health of the crop with the uh, weather data in real time to give also a five-day forecast of the irrigation requirements of the field. So this is an example of an application that is uh, free and it utilizes freely available data and uh, the farmer, um, they can use it, you know, at their, um, at their own pace. It's also available in English and in Arabic. Given the recent challenges globally and also regionally and locally in Lebanon on, uh, with climate change, with the increase in uh, temperatures, with uh, the deterioration of the water quality and the water amount that's available for the farmers, traditional agriculture cannot be sustainable if we go business as usual. Technology has to be introduced in, in, in mainly all parts of agriculture be it uh, fertilizer technology, pesticide technology, water application technologies. I see that remote sensing has a huge potential to be a major player in taking agriculture to a different level in Lebanon and also in the region. When we talk about this uh, technology, we want uh, farmers to be aware of the use of technology in improving their yields in reducing their costs and also reducing their environmental footprint. And we would like uh, companies who support startups and also uh, new engineers and new startups emerging in the sector to be aware of the potential of these technologies in terms of the economic advancement of the country as a whole and in terms of taking agriculture in the country to a new level.